Good morning. My name is Tom. I come to you from the North Maine woods of Maine. Today's video is about fire and water. And I'm going to show you that not all wood and tinder has to be bone dry in order to get a fire bill. And what I mean by that is everything that I'm going to use today, I am going to put in a six gallon bucket of water. Everything from uh, what I use to, to get fire with, and it's all going to be natural tinders. Everything that I gathered for this fire this morning came from the woods behind me. Nothing special about it. It is as 100 square miles that I hunt in right here. It is absolutely everywhere. So I want to share this with you. Right here's my uh, spruce tinders going into the bucket of water. This is jute twine waxed. Want that in that bucket of water? This right here is spruce tar. Want that in the bucket of water? This is my. Uh, Ferro rod, I want that in the bucket of water. Here's my knife, that's in the bucket of water. Here is my flint and steel uh, pocket lighter, I want that in the bucket of water. Here's some man made pots, we want that in the bucket of water, we'll go into that at the end. Here's some 12 gauge shotgun shells, I want that in the bucket of water. And here is my birch bark. And we're going to put that in the bucket of water. And just make sure his two rocks. That's in the bucket of water. All right. Now, I don't want anybody saying that all that stuff wasn't in a bucket of water. Because it was in a bucket of water. I'm trying to make sure to shake this off in front of the camera so that everybody can see that nothing is leaving. The view of the camera. Arrow rod. <laughs> now we go find my lighter. Okay, I think we got everything.
This is what I think of feather sticks. Put them on top because I don't need feather sticks. And I'm not saying that to brag. All I am saying is why waste the time a couple hours making feather sticks that I see on YouTube that if you don't make the perfect feather stick, you'll never ever in your lifetime be able to build a fire.
I have been nine minutes. At this point, I have been nine minutes uh, getting this fire built from a five gallon bucket of water. That is why I say, let's talk about the truth about fire building and wet materials. Hear that snap, crackle, pop? That means the core of the firewood has finally taken off. Good afternoon. Welcome back. My name is Tom. My topic today is, is how would you build a fire in the North Main woods if there was five to six feet of snow on the ground. And that means you can't find the dry grasses. Uh, a lot of the stuff that's laying on the ground that you rely on in the summer months just aren't there. They're buried in five or six feet of snow. And what I see on YouTube is a lot of fire builders, all they use is dry grass. Dry grass, dry grass, dry grass. It's the easiest form of nest to build. Is a, is a dry grass one. To me, and as a woodsman, dry grass is first grade. It's kindergarten. It's the first thing that we teach our children up here how to build a fire with, because it is the easiest uh, nest materials to work with. So today I wanna to talk about uh, sticks and how you use them as a nest material. Up here in Northern Maine, the most abundant resource that we have is sticks. Whether they be on fir trees, spruce trees, pine trees, hardwood trees, uh, dry tinder sticks is in the winter time is the only resource that you're going to have at your hands. So I'd like to challenge the bushcrafters that only work with dry grass. Step it up, step your game up and, and show us how you build a fire with sticks and stuff like that, no birch bark, uh, none of that stuff. Sometimes up here you might have to go a half a mile to find a birch tree if you're not in a birch forest. Sometimes there's birch trees on every corner, but most of the time that is not the case. But what is there is dry sticks. So today's video I'm going to light the easiest form, which is um, grass and pine needles and all of that. Now today, I'm going to be using a flint and steel. But if this was truly an emergency fire, uh, turn to your matches, turn to a lighter. Uh, this is, that's the true emergency fire. It's the fastest way that you're going to get anything to burn. But my, my point here today is, let's get out of first grade with the bushcraft, uh, step it up, start using the raw materials that are in the woods, uh, and today, like I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be using punk wood. I am going to be using dry chagger and stuff like that. I'm going to light a bundle of uh, pine needles to start with, and then I'm going to move on to a, uh, 
a, a, a bunch of twigs that will make up my nest. So thank you and uh, hang on and maybe we all can learn something from this video today. Alrighty, welcome back. Today I'm going to be using a file as my steel. I have a other file, but I mean another steel that I purchased on online. But I find I get a lot of sparks off here. And I'm going to be using uh, the punk wood that we made up a couple of days ago. So we will go from there. Now I like to do my punk wood, I mean how I do my flint and steel, is I like to take a piece of the charred punk wood and I like to pinch it against that rock, just like that. Now you're going to hear a little traffic today. I am not uh, up at the cabin. I am actually uh, down at home base today. So if you hear a car now and then, that's exactly why. But it was a great day to get out and practice my craft and whether I am at the cabin or whether I am at home base, uh, I like to go out. I live on a swamp. It's five square miles. So I have lots and lots and lots of uh, opportunities uh, just out back of my home uh, that provide me with deer. I've seen bear out there. Uh, absolutely everything. It is an awesome swamp to live on. So anyways, I'm down close to the swamp. I'm sitting at a picnic table. I've got my bush stove here for for my practicing. It is nothing more than a clam pot that has a hole in the end of it, in the, in the side of it to allow air in, and then I have a metal plate that it sets on. So anyways, you will hear some vehicles in the background. Good afternoon, welcome back. I, I harvested some uh, punk wood uh, a few days ago. Uh, I'll put a link to that video. But I've, I've harvested it because I'm getting low on charred punk wood, and I like to keep some on hand. But one of the ways I like to light it is with a magnifying glass. This one came out of a set of binoculars, old set. It's very easy. It's a resource that I will not use up and uh, because it's the sun. So I just want to show you how quick and easy this is. This is late December, so the sun rays isn't exactly perfect, but I'm hoping you can see this. But it only takes a few seconds. I hope you can see in there. That's how easy it is to light charred punk wood with magnifying glass. So I don't understand why not more woodsmen or bushcrafters are willing to throw this in their pack. It is a is it a resource that will last and last. Uh, I apologize for that, but I wanted to get out and show you this again. So I got my punk wood here, I got my nest over here, I lined it with some dry leaves, I put a piece of charred punk wood in there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to light this piece of punk wood with flint and steel. Hopefully we get a one strike, we'll see what happens. There she goes, she lit, what, three strikes? That's not too awful bad. Well, if you can see, she's all lit. Like I said, that file does an awesome job. So we're going to pick up this, this bundle here that is nothing more than pine needles and dry leaves. Easiest form to build a fire with in the main woods. First grade. So I challenge you, get away from first grade. All we're doing now is we're just kind of waiting for that lump of chaga down there to take a hold. Remember when you're doing this in the winter time, uh, there are no grasses to be found. Uh, they're under four to six feet of snow up here in the state of Maine. So your grasses and stuff like that, unless you're lucky enough to come by a cattail swamp, or something like that where you can get a fistful of the 
dry grasses from a cattail root, a cattail stem uh, in the in the forest. That's just not out there. It is buried in snow. So that's why a stick fire, a bundle here, is so important in the main forest. You know, short of doing it, you know, with a bundle of newspapers and all that. There's lots of ways to build a fire. But when I'm out there, I like to have fun with this stuff. All right, so you can see I got a nice little bundle here growing. Light, light blows, let it cook. Give it some air. And there you go. No grasses. No leaves, it takes a little bit of patience. But in the winter time, when there's six feet of snow on the ground, a lot of your options are gone. They just don't exist. So remember, you can find this punk wood in a tree. You can transfer an ember to it with a piece of charred punk wood. From, you bring a little bit of charred punk wood with you uh, for your first fire mentality. Look for one of these trees first. Because you can do the same thing with this as I did with that piece of chagar. You can fertilize the, the sticks with uh, this is a lot easier to come by than this. Chaga needs to be seasoned before it's any good anyways. But I, I have probably 25 gallons of chaga uh, in my fire building. So it's just something that I hunt for when I am outdoors. But a stick fire. A stick fire up here in the winter time is a must, a must to know how to build. Short of using matches, uh, and even then you're going to need something. Uh, short of using matches, uh, short of using a lighter. Uh, uh, it does, you, you know, you, you blow on it to get the ember really good in your uh, 
whether it be your punk wood or whether it be a piece of chaga. But then you just be patient with it. And what it's doing is it's warming up and it's transferring its ember over to the uh, fire. Or over to the sticks, I mean. That will wrap this one up. I hope that you see that a stick fire can be accomplished. Uh, and again, I would like to challenge the uh, bushcrafters as well as the other woodsmen in the woods to start showing us your technique in building a stick bundle and uh, how you get a stick bundle built. Remember, grass bundles are first grade. They are kindergarten in the bushcraft world. I realize that a lot of people on YouTube stop with that, but that, in my opinion, and that's why I challenge you, uh, if you don't like what I'm saying, leave me a comment. Uh, tell me, tell me why what I am saying is not accurate. Uh, but up here, you tell me where you'd find grass in the middle of winter. <laughs> you will not find grass up here in the middle of winter. Not if it's uh, 4 o'clock in the afternoon and you need a fire. Or not if it's 4 o'clock in the afternoon and you've got a little bit of hypothermia setting in because you have been cold from hunting for that dry grass. Uh, it just doesn't exist up here under 5 feet of snow. So, show me your techniques. Show me your techniques in building a stick fire. Uh, I would love to see it. I do not claim to be the best at it. But I do know up here that it is one of the options that is a must to know how to do uh, in the great state of Maine.
buy a bag. It is a pant leg off some wool pants. I don't know if I said it earlier, but the wool helps to keep all the tinders in here dry uh, because it wicks moisture away from them. All right. So all I've done is reached into my little my little fire bag here and pulled out the white birch bark that we collected. I'm going to lay this up here. Remember, this is an emergency fire. So you can build it as, you can put as much bark in there as you need to. Alrighty. Now, remember I said, this is going to be an emergency flint and steel. Here's my flint, here's my steel. I mean, yeah, here's my, here's my steel, here's my flint. Alright. Now, I said emergency. This is not the emergency tool for building an emergency fire. This is for fun. It is a lot of fun. I love building fires with flint and steel. But this is an emergency fire. This is for fun. This is not it. What I have in my pocket is the other flint and steel. This is a flint and steel. This is a flint and steel lighter. This thing will light in any weather. It's really good on not blowing out. And, it's, and uh, this is the flint and steel for an emergency fire. Alrighty. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to light a piece of birch bark with it. Should have had this ready, sorry. But anyways, I've got my flint and steel lit. I'm lighting my, my, uh, my birch bark. This is Maine. We have lots of birch bark. And now I am starting my emergency fire. That's what this is, an emergency fire. with the true flint and steel for after dark in the North Main Woods. I hope I haven't run on too long, but I wanted to stress in this video uh, in the North Main Woods how you build an emergency fire. Do not rely on your cell phone up here. It is a very large state. A big portion of it is not covered with cell phones. If your cell phone is your plan B, you have no business being in the North Main Woods. I am sorry for that, but that's exactly how I feel. You should come out, practice your craft, get to where you can do this, and then go into the North Main Woods in January when there is six feet of snow. So. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, leave a comment. I realize not everyone will like what I've had to say today about cell phones and all that. But uh, in this state, uh, it, it, I really feel that you shouldn't risk the lives of others to uh, come rescue you uh, because you entered the North Main Woods uh, unprepared uh, for what's up there. I want you to be prepared. I want you to enjoy this state. It is huge. It is beautiful. And there is lots and lots and lots of stuff to see. So come, visit, be prepared, enjoy the state. White birch bark is everywhere up here. So I hope you liked the video. Hit the like button. If you like the channel, send us a little bit of love. Hit the subscribe button. And I will come to you with more videos like this from the North Main Woods of Maine. Uh, have a great day, and I will see you on the next video. Hello there, my name's Tom. I come to you from the North Main Woods in Maine. Uh, I've had some questions lately about my, about my fire bag and what I carry in it and what it is. So I figured I would answer some of them questions today. Uh, you might hear a vehicle in the background. I am not at the cabin today. I am down at the uh, fire pit area on the swamp where my home base is. I will not get back to the cabin for a few days. But this is this is a this bag has so many purposes. I can use it as a pillow number one. I can use it for storage number two. This is a pant leg off an old pair of wool wool pants. Uh, I've cut the bottom off and just sewed it shut. I put a little drawstring in the top. But the reason I like it is wool acts as a wick, and it, and uh, it'll pull the moisture out of if I put grass in here or I put bark in here, whatever. It'll pull the moisture out. And it's a real handy bag for just putting my, as I go through the woods during the day, I pick stuff up, whether it be grasses or birch bark. So I kind of wanted to just 
uh, just show you, and it's not just that stuff in here, I have equipment in here. Uh, this is a can right here of, uh, of punk wood. That's always in my fire bag, just enough to get my first fire bill. You know that first fire mentality. I have a tin. This is my tin for making uh, charred punk wood. That is always in there. Inside of this tin, I keep uh, jute twine. I keep, uh, this is a piece of uh, steel wool, another great fire source. I have a, a stone here for sharpening my knives. I also carry a Bic lighter in here. All that fits in that little can. So, and then I have my tin for making charred punk wood. So all that's in there. I have birch bark. It's a great place to store a handful of birch bark. This right here, you're gonna say, what the heck is that? This is a clamshell. I got this a few years ago when I was down on the coast, uh, down near foraging for some, for some uh, <laughs> a food. I did a little trip down there just for that. It was actually quite a bit of fun. That's in there. The purpose that this is in there, one is it's a spoon. It's something I can use to eat off. But also I can take fat wood and I can shave uh, the shavings of fat wood from my knife into here and I've got a nice collector for collecting the fat wood and it's from nature I, I love stuff that I pick up in nature because to me I like to say that you can find almost anything you need out there so what else is in here there's just a whole bunch of stuff I also have a little fire bag in here and in this fire bag is where I keep my flint I mean my steel keep my steel in there, I keep a piece of flint in there, I have another little small piece of flint, all of that is in there. I have a knife in there, this is one of those three knives. That's in my fire bag. It has a 90 degree edge so I can use it on my fire rod. It has a skinning tool so I can, I can use it for skinning animals. It has a saw blade. I don't use it for sawing trees. I think it is useless for that. But what it is really good for is making those fine, fine fibers, fibers that you need for a, a uh, flint and steel or for a, uh, a fire rod. Uh, lots and lots and lots of uses for, for a knife like that. That's in there. So as long as I have my fire bag, I've literally got everything I need to spend the night. Now you can't see these little pieces here, but them little pieces right there, those are in my fire bag. What they are is inner tubes from a bicycle. Uh, I cut them down. That makes an awesome fire starter. On a rainy day when you're having problems, uh, and then in my pocket, I always have my uh, flint and steel lighter. Uh, but this stuff right here, you get this stuff lit, a piece of inner tube on a rainy day. I realize it's not a man-made, I mean, it's not a natural tinder, but it takes up so little room in the, uh, in the fire bag that I can't see why you wouldn't want to carry it. Now that'll burn. I'll get it over here where you can see it. On a rainy day, that's a nice fire starter. More birch bark. I have a piece of fat wood in there. Probably gonna, oh yeah. Also in this bag, this right here is another little tin, and in here is where I keep a magnifying glass. I always have a magnifying glass with me when I'm out in the woods. See how that inner tube burns? That is perfect for when you've got a day where everything is absolutely wet. My, I am a self-rescuer. 
I think it is very important that you be able to take care of yourself when you're out in the woods, no matter what you need to use to get the job done. If it's a piece of inner tube, if it's a lighter, if it's a flint and steel, it doesn't matter. Everything has a time and everything has a place. But this is a renewable resource. I will never use it up. That's why this is a, a, the, the lens out of an old pair of binoculars. This is always with me. Uh, we have a lot of great sun up here. Even in low sun, you can still get a fire built with this. It is very simple to do. It is very easy to do. I will put a link in this video to how I light chad punk wood with this. It takes a matter of seconds to light chad punk wood. I do not understand why more outdoorsmen do not have this in their fire bag. That is a must in my bag because it will never ever run out. And more fat wood. Probably just going to dump it out now. Now the bag is empty. I have more of that inner tube. I have more fat wood. This is a piece of chaga. Here's some more stones for flint. Piece of quartz for flint and steel. And then, and this right here is a piece of waxed jute twine. This is this is jute twine that I weave together with. Uh, uh, three strands, how's it three or four? There's three strands of jute twine that I braided together like girls would braid their hair and then I dipped it in paraphernalia wax and it is this is why there's a knife in this pack I have one on my belt but I always have one in the fire bag. As you can see in this fire bag there are several methods for building a fire. In the North Main woods it doesn't matter how you get that fire built, you have to get that fire built to spend the night. Especially, we do a lot of ice fishing, we do a lot of snowmobiling. This right here is waxed jute twine. Jute twine on itself is great. Throw some wax on there and it's even better. You can dip this into, a, into water, you can put this into water, you can leave it there for, for two or three days and it will still light. Take it out, dry it off, it's still a fire starter. And as you can see, I only took an inch off there, as you can see that will burn and burn and burn and burn. This right here is three pieces of fat wood that I put, the, I put some inner tube around. The reason that I did that is my daughter needed, uh, she's a hiker, and what she, she needed, I needed to know that she had stuff in her pack that, that she could get a fire bill. Without all this other stuff, I want, she, she's gonna travel light. So I, I put this together for her. It's a piece of fat wood, three piece, little pieces of fat wood with inner tube around it. Now you don't want to light that inner tube when it's around the stick like that because what happens is when it melts through it just kind of explodes. So what you do is you take this inner tube off and you get it lit. These are what I built for her so that she would have what I knew she would have in her pack and that in her lighter and she could get a fire bill. So then you could just put your Put your fat wood on top of that inner tube and she can have a fire. That's enough to get her started. So but don't if you if you if you uh, light this, you'll see you light that. My plan was at first was to just light that inner tube up and then she could build a fire that way, real simple, real easy. It didn't work. Once this is like an elastic. And once it melted through, it exploded, and the kindling went everywhere. So the second thought was take the inner tube off, get it lit, throw your fat wood on top of that, and then she can start adding, adding wood to it like that. So that's why this is in the pack. This was an experiment that I put together for her. Works great, uh, and that's, that's, so that's, that's why you see that. 
and I always have a piece of chaga in my pack. Uh, up here I hunt for it regular. Chaga and a stick bundle are, are great together. In here, I did a video, I can put a link to this. This is a piece of, of pine sap. It, 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 it oozes out of the trees up north from a bug and it gets the size of a, uh, of a golf ball. But this, I did a video on this. I, I can also put a link to this so that you can see this. The link will be down in the uh, description area. But you see how that took off right there? That is fat wood and that little piece of inner tube. So if you're a hiker, or you're a snowmobiler or anything like that, I think that is a pretty good thing to carry on your snowmobile or in your four-wheeler or in your pack. Uh, that's a big fire. Uh, she, I built it for her and I thought she could get a decent fire going with that. She does not have the fire experience that I do. Uh, so, and I think anybody that doesn't, I think this is a really good uh, alternative uh, as, a, as a Bushman skill or woodsman skill. Uh, like I said, it's not, everything has its has a time and a place. As much as I like flint and steel, as much as I like the magnifying glass, I do not think that it is, it is good for everybody unless they are willing to get out and practice their craft. As you can see, uh, the black smoke coming off there is uh, from the fat wood. The inner tube is long gone that is more than a good fire for, for a novice to be able to get a fire going in the North Main Woods. So this wraps up everything that's in my fire bag. The only thing that wasn't in there is as I travel through the day, uh, I pick up uh, punk wood. So I would probably toss a, a couple of handfuls of, of raw punk wood in there because as, you, as I've showed in other videos, it is really easy to transfer a spark to good quality punk wood. And I have a video uh, up there that uh, has good quality punk wood, where to find it, how to use it, and all of that. So I will probably put a link to that in the description of this video also. But that will wrap up what the woodsman carries in his uh, fire bag. Like I said, if I wanna take a nap at noontime, I've got myself a pillow, and I've always got me a collector bag on top of that. These are the things that I keep in my fire bag. Uh, and this is more important to me than a lot of other gear that I see other people carrying. I would rather carry this and be ready uh, on any of the days that you're up here in the North Main Woods. See that? Let's give this a whirl.
You'd have no trouble getting a fire built with that. You see that? I don't see the use for it out in the woods. But I do think it's a really good skill to know. I am 54 years old. And I remember when you could buy a wooden match and it said strike anywhere. And you really could strike that wooden match anywhere and get a fire. Anywhere. You could strike it on your thumbnail, your, your teeth, your zipper, anything. And then a few years ago, they took them off the market. And the only reason I can see that they took them off the market was because of the simpleton people or whoever was misusing it. Or whatever reason, I have, I still don't know, but... The new wooden matches, they say strike anywhere, but you can't strike them anywhere. You can't strike them on a wood stove. You can't strike them on a, anything and have them light. So, my thought with this is if you know how to do this, this is ashes out of the wood stove or out of a campfire and a cotton swab. When you're at the cabin, they can't take this away from you. Not if you have a stockpile of cotton swabs. And not if you've got a wood stove that's full of ashes. This is a fire method that is excellent for use in a campsite. Uh, campfire at the cabin. Wood stove in the cabin. Or just plain building a fire anywhere around the camp. I think it's too many pots and pieces to use it as a bush tool. But to use it as a woodsman tool out in the woods, when there are a lot better alternatives out in the woods. It's already there, waiting for us. We can go out there and grab them, build a fire, and be on our way. But for this, to show to my grandkids is a magic trick, <laughs> or just a fun way to build a fire, to show them that there are alternatives, ways of building a fire around the cabin. This is one of them. Ashes and cotton swab. I got this from David West on YouTube. I think he has a heck of a channel and I pick up lots of tips from him and his channel. This is one of them. Very simple to do, very easy to do. I've heard him say that some people have trouble getting it to go. I don't understand why. It's, uh, it's, it's a very simple technique and works very well. So, thank you for uh, tuning in to this video, taking time out of your day to watch it. I would greatly appreciate if you would hit the like button, maybe subscribe to the channel if you like it. And I will work on more stuff like this in the North Maine woods of Maine. So thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.
tomorrow I need to go a thousand feet behind me. A thousand feet behind me and then take a hard left for another a thousand feet. So we'll see how that all goes uh, tomorrow. But what a piece of property. There's a deer run down there foot wide with uh, two natural funnel uh, pinch points. They come up against the uh, stream in two places. Uh, so that's really good. I, I've, I've kind of picked out a place for a tree stand uh, while I was on my way back here to the six-wheeler. But all in good time. I've got some more scouting to do. But it, it's such a mess in there because it's a chopping and blowdowns everywhere. But it'll be very easy to steer the deer uh, by putting in a trail. So that's uh, that'll be on my agenda too. Uh, put in a trail that they like to walk on and, and then put in my uh, tree stand. So that's probably what I'm going to do. So now I'm going to have a cup of coffee and a piece of pumpkin bread. My wife baked me some pumpkin bread, so I'm going to have that. And I also brought in a banana. And I'm starving. This was not a play trip, so I didn't bring anything in for lunch. I did bring in a coffee. But I'm going to sit here now, enjoy the uh, scenery, have a snack, and then I'm going to head myself back to the truck. So you have a great day, and I will see you in the next one. And if you like this kind of stuff and you want to follow the series here, uh, subscribe to the channel, throw me a bone, hit the like button, and let YouTube know that you want to see my stuff. So thank you very much, and I will see you in the next one.